Hey team, Andre from High Performance Academy here. Welcome to another one of our webinars. Now, we are only about two weeks away from the start of our South Island Endurance Series. One of the big changes that we've made for this season is to get some professional molded heat wrapping done on our exhaust manifold. And if we jump across to my laptop screen, you can see our Cinco exhaust manifold sitting there. And this has been sent to Australia. We couldn't find anyone in New Zealand that was capable of doing this uh, but we sent it to PR Technology in Sydney, Australia. Uh, PR Technology are not well known in world time attack uh, realms for basically building the uh, RP968, Porsche 968 which has uh, taken top honours a number of times and this is the exact style of heat shielding that was applied to the manifold, all the hot parts on that Porsche. So it's a fairly complex task and I do not pretend to know the ins and outs of exactly what goes into this but it is a stainless heat shielding it uses a, uh, a ceramic material I believe between two layers it's also got an air gap to the actual manifold itself and then it's all laser welded together so this is significantly more effective than heat wrapping uh, we had originally put heat wrap on the manifold and obviously there's a range of different qualities of heat wrap out there I've normally found it works reasonably well on exhaust downpipe, so the front pipe off the turbocharger, but the manifold itself, I mean, obviously in operation, this thing's gonna be glowing red hot, probably up around 900 degrees C, and just getting that heat wrap to last a reasonable amount of time it is really, really tricky. So uh, this is laser welded in place around it. We've got no risk of it falling apart. Uh, it's really intricately constructed, which you can see uh, there is the ability to still allow access to to our exhaust gas temperature ports here. Uh, on the back, it's a little bit hard to see. We've also got our individual cylinder uh, lambda sensors as well. So uh, this is a, a solution that we believe is going to make a really big difference to the car. We also took the uh, opportunity to get the front pipe and the uh, wastegate down pipe also also uh, sheathed as you can see here. Uh, one of the, the problems that we've got with this car or one of the things we've done to this car that's definitely made this more of a significant issue is that we have fitted a completely flat underfloor on it. Uh, it's got a couple of knacker ducts that do allow air flow up into the uh, transmission tunnel but the problem of course is that we've got the exhaust pipe running down through there. Conventionally that's completely open so we've got good air flow. For aero dynamic performance we wanted to try out this flat floor so now we've basically got this oven so anything we can do in there to reduce heat uh, is going to definitely be beneficial. Uh, there's nothing particularly new about this technology of these molded laser welded she heat shields uh, you'll see these on all sorts of professionally built race cars it's just our first opportunity to actually uh, embrace this technology get it on the car and we've had the opportunity to have one uh, shakedown with the car so far far and everything does seem significantly better so obviously you can see here after a, a bit of hard running it does start to develop some nice uh, heat colouring it is stainless steel after all uh, I should mention this is available in an Inconel product as well and uh, talking to PR Tech uh, they had tested back to back the Inconel and the stainless variants and essentially found uh, no advantage with the Inconel uh, but it's it comes at a significant increase in expense so uh, they've they've decided the stainless is absolutely fine. Uh, still a little bit of work to do, uh, we probably will end up doing something about the wastegate which is currently exposed and uh, we've got our existing heat shield on the uh, turbine exhaust housing as well. So yeah, initial testing, that looks like it's a positive. Uh, definitely the engine bay temperatures were significantly cooler than they have been, but it's still hard to tell until we actually run the car under proper race conditions for a one hour race. Uh, another thing that we have changed is the cooling system in terms of the radiator and the lines. Uh, we inherited this car with a 450 horsepower V8, probably 400 horsepower Toyota V8, uh, and a radiator that even then was a little bit 
bit marginal for the application. Uh, we got it to work with the V8 by doing some pretty elaborate ducting and that worked to start with with our SR20 but uh, as soon as we wanted to start leaning on the car a little bit, turning the boost up for sprint races, essentially if we were running up around 600 horsepower uh, within one lap on a warm day, basically the engine coolant temperature was up above 100 degrees C which obviously isn't ideal. Even when we were running it in endurance trim, 16 PSI at around about 450 flywheel horsepower, it, it was marginal in controlling that temperature uh, particularly if the ambient temperature came up a little bit uh, we were in a situation where we had to start short shifting or dropping the boost in order to control temperature so we didn't want that so what we've done it is a little hard to see I've sort of got it out of shot awkwardly but uh, a brand new radiator core this is a PWR core from Australia PWR are pretty well known all around the world they build cores for the likes of the Australian supercars series as well as uh, you'll find their cores right up to the likes of F1 so uh, suffice to say they they know what they're doing interesting aspect with this is that I think the general consensus on radiators is bigger is better and normally you would think if we want more cooling you go to a bigger radiator maybe a thicker radiator I've actually got some uh, YouTube video a uh, YouTube video on this particular aspect particularly the thickness of the radiator uh, which kind of debunks that theory it's a lot more to do with the design of the radiator passes the fins etc and sometimes thicker uh, radiator cores are actually worse at cooling uh, so despite uh, PWR telling us that this core that we've now got will have somewhere around about a 30 to 40 percent improvement in thermal efficiency uh, effectiveness in other words uh, it's actually very marginally smaller than what we had so a little bit of a surprise there another couple of changes we've made and again a little difficult to see here but uh, we have upsized the uh, the lines from dash 16 to dash 20 uh, and at the same time just to make our life a little bit easier when servicing the car and working on it uh, at the radiator we can see we've got these Wiggins clamps and that just allows a really quick disconnect uh, particularly because of the design of this installation uh, it's a little hard to tell because it's down here behind the alternator uh, we've got the electric water pump basically previously with two uh, dash 16 AN fittings uh, because of the lack of flexibility in the line it was just about an impossible possibility to install and remove that easily so that will make our life a lot easier there. Uh, this is the other side here of course and uh, we've got uh, a new larger uh, outlet from the cylinder head here. Uh, up here we've got our coolant pressure sensor and then uh, we've got water feeds to the turbocharger as well as a bleed. Now one aspect, this is the, the bleed line here, uh, one aspect which we've also changed here is the plumbing to the turbocharger and you can see in this shot here we've got the oil feed line this again comes down to uh, just the amount of heat that's being produced, particularly with a top mount turbocharger with a lack of airflow around it and how close everything is sitting, particularly between the compressor and the exhaust housing there, there's not a lot of room, we've got a water feed and a water outlet on each side of the turbocharger, we've got the oil uh, inlet at the top and the oil drain at the bottom and we were finding uh, particularly the, the water lines which were a, a conventional uh, fabric braid AN line, those were basically cooking. We ended up having one fail dur during a practice session where it had basically uh, split through. So uh, going to hard lines on all of that, uh, that stuff, uh, hopefully, I'm just trying to find the other photo of it, I haven't got one, uh, hopefully is going to improve our reliability and if you are looking at plumbing things like this it might be a bit daunting looking at making up these hard lines out of alloy. Uh, the other thing that makes it really worthwhile particularly for some of the longer runs is that while there's a little bit of work involved in making these lines and flaring them uh, they're actually significantly cheaper than using uh, the likes of Teflon braid or fabric braid so uh, yeah those are our changes there. Uh, in terms of the rest of the the changes we're making there have been substantial ones but one of the ones was getting the rest of our Izzy Racing sensors on the car so this is a, a bit of an awkward shot but this is an Izzy Racing uh, IR 
brake temperature sensor. So you can see that's mounted there off the McPherson strut and it is pointing out here towards the brake rotor. Uh, these have uh, a field of view that sort of I guess looks something like this. Uh, so with a bit of math or a bit of a template you can basically uh, locate the sensor so that it's getting a full view of the entire width of that rotor. Uh, this sort of comes into play because we are also upgrading the brakes on the car uh, and that's our new rotor. Uh, these arrived this morning. These are a 380mm rotor so that the original brakes on it were a little bit marginal because they were designed to go under a 17. These will only fit under an 18 now. Uh, unfortunately the Courier at this stage seems to have lost the six pot uh, endless calipers to go along with this. So at the moment the brakes not really actually that much use on their own. So we've got uh, about two weeks as I mentioned. We're hoping to get another shakedown in the car this weekend and uh, basically make sure that it is 100% ready to rock up to uh, the first round at Ruapuna in Christchurch. So uh, keep following our social media, we will be updating you on what goes on there. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.